Hello boys, what's going on? This is Yoki here, and welcome back to another episode of this FIFA 22 Salford City Road to Glory, and it is the episode after Elliot List gets injured. And I've still not recovered. I don't know about you boys down there in the comment section, but I have not recovered from this. I miss him so much. There will be no top championship goal scorer this season for Elliot List. It is guaranteed, it is confirmed now with this injury that he's got. It's just not going to happen. He's out for three months. So I just, there's no way he scores that many goals. Now, three months, though, isn't the longest of time. So we kind of have to think about it in this connotation of, do you sign someone in January? Would it be a waste of money? Do we need to sign someone in January? How quickly can we get Elliot List back up to speed? So it's three months. So he will be back at the end of February. Maybe in February, but we will have him for March. And April and those are two massive months in a championship season the thing is with a championship you can go on a late run in the league you can have late runs uh, of wins and you can be right up there you could be right in it right in the fight for the playoffs or automatic now at the moment we are in the playoffs do I think we will stay in the playoffs probably not I, I you know we've had an unbelievable start to this championship season I didn't expect it to go this way I know you guys probably wouldn't have expected it to go this way probably more like the league one season that we had but so far is it's going good it's going good so I mean I don't think it is going to continue though and that's just kind of just me maybe being a little bit pessimistic but we do have some scout reports here and the youth players are going to be pretty important right now for us and we started getting better. Holy Tony. Okay. Well, that's a good start with the youth intake today. I mean, the others might not be so great. No, they're not. But Tony, it didn't even catch what position he could play in. We're going to look at him straight away after this. Let's just get through the England one, which doesn't look like it's got anything for me. But I need to see Tony. Is Tony going to... Oh, my God. He's 65 overall. Already, if he's a winger, he's basically the new Gareth Bale, right? Is he a wing back? I don't think he's a wing back. In fact, I actually think he's a centre back. I, j I actually think he's definitely not a winger with that pace. He's a CDM or a centre back. CDM would be four weeks, centre back four. And centre back is the hardest position. The problem is with Tony, is he's like five foot seven. So we're going to go CDM. I would love for him to be a centre back. But if we go back and just look at his height, he's five foot six. He just, he can't be a centre back. Doesn't look five foot six there, but he can't be a centre back at five foot six. So a CDM though, a really hard working aggressive midfielder, Tony can be just that. Maybe a little bit more like Aaron Ramsey. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to make some kind of comparison, but already... Tony looks good. I got very, very excited about those youth prospects. We've got quite a few games to play in this month. We've got Barnsley, Middlesbrough, Forest, Bristol. I think we're definitely going to play the Forest game. We're probably going to play the Barnsley game or the Middlesbrough game. No, I think we'll probably sim the Barnsley game. I'm probably going to judge it where they are in the league. I'd love to play Brighton again because that was such a great game last time round. But again, if I can get a bit of a rotation of the teams that we play this season, that would be nice. So first up then, 23rd place, Barnsley, which we will send. And this will be the starting 11. It's a very strong starting 11. We've gone with Timmy next to Ricky J. Jones. Morrow's going to start this one. I'm kind of expecting maybe a sim at this stage. And we lose it 2-0 to Barnsley. That's not a good start to the episode. Woodrow with both of them. It seems like we was in that game. Like we was fairly competitive, just... Couldn't get the job done. Chance to bounce back here, though, with the Nottingham Forest game. And what we have to bear in mind... Yeah, FIFA, this this is clearly not a kit clash, is it, FIFA? Absolutely not a kit clash. Considering that we've got a white away kit, which just instantly makes this not a kit clash, it's not even a difficult one to figure that one out. This will be the start at 11. Now, Forest are in 10th. This is a good opportunity for us to get our first win of the episode. We're going Jay Jones and Young up top. Galloway in right mid. I have to bear in mind, in two days, we play again. Sibic is in the starting 11 for this one and starting back from injury. And we've gone with the young Czech goalkeeper. See how he gets on today in, the, in this match. We've got to give him some game time or else he won't improve. Already 71 rated, though. So, I mean... It's good signs. I already know Forest have got a pretty decent squad. Alex Mighton is a player that you guys have been requesting regularly. We're nearly at a stage where potentially he could be someone we go in for. I know this team's going to be pretty strong. I know they're going to have a decent start at 11, to be honest with you. They've got Jonathan Panzo. That's a really good signing for them. Maybe we look at him. But they've got a decent team here at Forest, so they've got a good bench as well, actually. It's just, it annoys me that the bench 
of most teams is usually better than the starting 11. Now, in some situations, you know, there's rotation that happens in the league. So, you know, obviously, there's going to be those kind of situations. But I think the sooner we just go out there and just get a second controller, I think it's going to change how the career mode actually goes for us. I think we're going to find it more difficult because there's a lot of times where I'll be coming up against a team's not-so-best starting 11 while playing, when in reality, if I came up against the best starting 11, this is a really good run so far. Brad Young's going to knock that to Ricky J. Jones. That was probably the wrong ball. That fizzled out there in the end. But yeah, if the teams played their best starting 11, we might end up with different results because we'd be coming up against better players more consistently. Hey, Moss there. Finds Lado. Lado just couldn't control it quick enough. I wanted to fizz that ball into Ricky J. Jones. I'd sent him on the run. I just could not get Lado to just sort his feet out quicker, which he's usually very good at. He's gone up to, what, 71 rated now as Lado this season. So, I mean, that's great to see. One of the stars from the very first season. Him and Elliot List from the first season still having impacts in this save makes me really happy. Finds Lado. Things that one behind. Galloway took too long to release the football. Needed to be quicker than that. Brad Young had made the run. He's probably fuming there to be. It had to be. Don't take a touch. It had to be an instant pass. Do not take the touch there, Galloway. We haven't looked bad here in the opening moments. I'll tell you one thing as well. Galloway does not look out of position playing on the wing. And although I don't see him as an out-and-out -out winger as he gets to that. That's lovely. Galloway tries to pull it back across. He does. Oh, Lorena. Oh, my God. What a finish. What a goal. That was absolutely stunning. Ola Reiner bags another goal. Again, remember, we did sign Ola Reiner on the premise that he was trying to get his career back on track here. So I am open to selling him. If we ever form these narratives, because we have to build storylines, right? The game doesn't do it for us. If we ever build these narratives and storylines, we have to follow through with them. At Parat Pro was another player like that. But oh my God, what a finish that is. And what a ball in it is from Galloway. As I was saying about Galloway... He feels very good as a winger. I'm already contemplating just changing him to be a, a, a midfielder. He doesn't have the out-and-out -out pace, but he, he just seems to do such a good job out there. At Parat Pro now, wants Brad Young. He's not going to go to Brad Young. He's going to choose the choice of Galloway, who I said wasn't really quick enough. Oh, my God, what ball in that nearly was. Worrell is there, though. Worrell is a bit of a brick wall. He's someone who maybe at some stage we might look at for centre-back, but... Um, I'm pretty happy with where our centre-backs are at the moment, if I'm being 100% honest. That was a really important header from him. Yet to pose too much of a threat here, Nottingham Forest. I want a bit more control here, and that was a little bit rash from Mark. We're going to play on here in this instance. They do have a man down. I, I'm not upset for it being called back. That was a bit of a rash tackle from Mark. I think it'll only be a yellow card, which is fine. Just a yellow. He's okay, ref. But it has caused an injury to the Forest player. That's forced them into maybe a, an early substitution they wouldn't have wanted to make. I don't know if McKenna coming on is going to be for the better. We'll see as time goes on. But Mark didn't even get carded for that, which I, I'm, I'm not sure. It didn't seem to get pulled back for the foul, and that's probably why. But I think that was probably a yellow card. A little bit cynical of him. Completely took the player out. He's been a problem for me so far as Alex Mighton, and you guys have recommended him so much, so I'm assuming he's very good. But he's been a little bit of a nightmare for me, Akpa now. I'm going to try and play in Brad Young, and Brad Young just doesn't have the legs there, but it's clever of him to understand that. And then Brad Young's ball into uh, Ricky J. Jones was nearly perfect. But it's a stay pressure now from Nottingham Forest. As the game goes on, they're starting to look a little bit more lively. There's certainly a side that I know can cause me issues, but conceding just before the half isn't the idea. And we're going to go in at the half, 1-0 to the good, in what has been actually a pretty tough match. This one is, without a doubt, far from over. We haven't overly created too much beyond the unbelievable goal that we scored. And they've slowly just grown into the game. It's not been an exciting game for the neutral. I'll say that for one. This is very good play. Do we have the bodies back here? I need to stop that ball coming across. Oh, what's been given? Oh, no. They've given the penalty. Conor Ogilvy is going to be given a yellow card. Nottingham Forest have just been gifted away back into the game. Let's just look at his back. Yeah, he takes him out. The ball's gone when he puts his foot in. Well, our young Czech goalkeeper is going to have something special to do here, and he's not. He's been put wide. And Gulo will be absolutely devastated. Nottingham Forest just been gifted away back into the match. And we've got away with that one, big time. Upper's touch there was not good. Sibic's been turned by Angulo, who will want to make up for the earlier miss. 
What a save from the goalkeeper. Well, maybe we're going to start seeing some frustration in front of goal for Forrest. They're having a much better second half. It's not going their way at the moment. Well, this game has got super scrappy. And mainly on our behalf. Alex Mighton now. Sibic, get to that. Oh, that's great from him. Now is there a breakaway at Parat Pro? Wait, oh, that is... It's a, rec it's a reckless tackle, right, from Lolly. That's a yellow. But Ricky J. Jones was in. If I was allowed to play that ball with at Parat Pro, Ricky J. Jones was in. Alex Mighton again now against Mark. Having to turn inside. He's completely done Mark there. Absolutely done him. What was that from Fitzwater? And oh my God, the goalkeeper saves us. The goalkeeper has saved me there. Brad Young did not help me by holding the ball up, but the goalkeeper, what a double save that is. Going out wide here now. If they're going to score, it has to be now. Last chance saloon here for Nottingham Forest. V nearly gets to that, and Mark will win the header. The header was not... The Galloway, though, which is the issue here. And they've still got the football. We do. Fitzwater, that is beautiful. Young then does hold it. And we will see the full-time whistle. Salford City 1, Nottingham and Forest nil, And that's a massive three points because that was a game that was just crying out for me to concede a late goal. I just will not forget the double save in that one. That double save saved us. We had two shots all game. Nottingham Forest only having five. It was an awful game of football. But we feel like we got away with that one, thanks to the keeper. So we've got Middlesbrough coming up next. And I think I'm going to sim this one. They just do not get kit clashes, do they? They just... I mean, it's so simple. Just put us in our away kit. Oh, my God, EA. But I, I think we're going to sim this one and play the Bristol City game. This will be the 11. Hopefully, it's good enough to get the job done. Let's see what happens here in the sim. The Barnsley sim didn't go my way, did it? And neither is this one. It's going to be back-to-back 2-0 sims. I... Hey, we've had so much luck with the Sims earlier in the season. They're finally coming back to bite us a little bit now. Right, so there is one thing I want to note here is that John McNeil, one of the youngsters, is starting to get very frustrated at the club because of his playtime. So I think we have to start incorporating that. Like we do, we try and create our storylines and stuff. We've got John McNeil. He's a 20-year-old. He's getting frustrated at not getting game time. We're either going to have to give him that game time or sell John McNeil, which would be the first Youth Academy player we would sell. I don't want to sell him, so I'm going to try and incorporate him. But, I mean, Lado's played so well. I can't. I just... I can't. This is free back-to-back. -back, terrible kit clashes. Have they just stopped changing the kits? It just puts everyone now in their home kit and you have to change it yourself. Because there's no way that these should even be kit clashes. We do have some tired legs. Again, this stretch is quite difficult because of the injury situation. But that's going to be the start of 11. I'm going to give it to McNeil. I'm also keeping in Hornekic because he played so well in the last game. I'm going to give him the opportunity again. This looks like a formation that we can get at. It's very similar to our own. We already know that Semiyeo, though, does have the pace to cause us issue. We're anticipating another tough game. Now, hopefully, we can be a little bit more fluid on the offense in this one. I said it, though. I said things will change without Elliot List. Ricky J. Jones is having a great year. There's no bones about that, but... Unlike in other seasons, if you look at this year, the goals aren't really spread out. It's been Elliot List scoring the majority of all our goals. Uh, him and Ricky J. Jones. So you get rid of one of them and it makes life far more difficult because you're just not going to score as many goals. And I feel like that's probably where we're struggling now. And I don't feel like we can question um, Young and Timmy because that's not been their role in the team. They're not there necessarily, although I want them to score, obviously. I don't want them not to get goals. They are in the team to be more of a facilitator than they are a goal scorer. Ricky J. Jones is in here. Ricky J. Jones! Big moment! Again! Oh my god, what save? Get the header! Oh, he can't win the header. We might get the ball back here, though. McNeil does. Gives it to Amos. And I didn't have the runner, did I? I just did not have the runner that I needed. I'm going to get that into Young. I'm not. Marvin into Young. Across then to McNeil. And 1-0 Salford City. And maybe McNeil should be playing more. I just love Lado, don't I? It's hard not to start Lado. But maybe on that, McNeil should get some more game time. He scored a good goal in the last episode as well. We're definitely going to need our players like McNeil chipping in with goals now. Lado as well, actually, to be fair. Who hasn't been a big goal scorer for us. Oh, Marvin takes a great touch. Is that going to be against us? No, it's going to be for us. Marvin now. Great footwork to nearly get him through both players. Didn't quite work out for him. 
But I think we need these players chipping in with goals now because Ricky J. Jones is great, but I don't think he's actually as consistently potent as Elliot List, which isn't a problem because he's still scored several goals this year. But I, I don't actually... Is he in? Is he in? Ah, oh, his touch is never going to be great. It's just not where he's comfortable, that. It just isn't. I've just spotted this is actually my 200th game in management. Can't believe it. 200 games in management, 200 games at Salford. And we haven't loved them all, but we're loving this one at the moment. Brannigan! Oh, that would have been beautiful, wouldn't it? If he had scored that, that would have been unreal. Mayo now is a... Problem causer. We know that already. Yana! What a save from the keeper. He's proving himself to be... Well, he's just proving himself. I don't, I don't know what else I can say to that. He is just proving himself at the moment. Run again. Pings it into McNeil. <sighs> Wasn't too bad of a pass. That was actually a really good pass from Brannigan. Unexpectedly, they've made a mistake. McNeil waits. Gets it in. Ricky J. Jones. That is great defending from Pring. They've given the ball back to Ola Aina now. Brannigan, what can he do? Tries to turn and shoot. We've got it in there with Young, Brad Young. And in the end, it's just fizzled out. Ricky J. Jones on the football. Oh, he flakes it up over his man. That was actually really impressive. Uh, it led to nothing, so you probably won't see it, but that was actually pretty impressive. I'm happy with that. I try not to do skill moves when we're playing this career mode, if I'm being honest with you. Just save them for, like, online play because the amount of skills you can do with players is... A little bit ridiculous. Ricky J. Jones is going to be found now. And I do with him. I go. Oh, that was great. Oh, my God. It's Doyle. It's the centre-back Doyle. And that's why Doyle doesn't play up front. Because he's a centre-back for a reason. And that shot tells you why he's a centre-back. It's been a pretty back-and-forth game of football so far. I'm hoping we could just get the second. I don't like these games here at the minute. Although they're more realistic. That are on edge. Where I don't know if we're going to just do enough to win the game. And I need to win these games if we want our playoff aspirations to be met. Brad Young there into Ricky J. Jones. He does pretty well. Good footwork from him all the way round. He's just so delightful to have on the ball. Marvin whips that one in towards McNeil. You'd want Young there, really. And Young's header back down to McNeil. Just can't make it. Now, I will mo I will note this. We played exceedingly well in this one. Ricky J. Jones was safe from Bentley. That should be 2-0. He knows it. And he can't start misfiring. And actually, someone said changes number 2-7. So I will look to do that after this game. I completely forgot. I do apologise. But I will look to change his number right after this match. Hopefully, I remember that I need to do that after this match. But yeah, I, I will try and remember. I don't actually know who number seven is. I think it's Hunter. So we would just be taking Hunter's number away, which is sad. But he does leave us in the coming months. That's a great ball to Marvin. Marvin loves a ball roll. And if I didn't try the step over, I would have been in. Timer now. And Doyle has been pulled out of position. And he gets there to block it, but not twice. Ogilvy gets there to block the second. Semiyeu now up against Brannigan. Brannigan doing really well against him. He can't break through at the moment. Good defending is needed. McNeil does brilliantly there. Ricky J. Jones now is going to try and just break away. He can. Pring has been great for them defensively. Double sub here for us then. Akpa's going to come on for Brannigan. Good game from Brannigan. Really good game. And we're also going to bring off Ricky J. Jones. If I felt like he had a goal in him this match, I'd keep him on. But it doesn't feel like it. Feels like his goal scoring record at the start of the season was way too good. I'm going to be honest with you. It was super unrealistic. And I was contemplating how long can he keep that going for. And it does feel like now... That's how long he can keep it going for. Go on then, Timmy. Keep going. Timmy Abraham to finish the game off. Oh, he's going to be saved. Oh, he's practically his first touch of the football, really. And he's saved. That could have just been game done and dusted. Gets that one into Young. Young holds it up nicely. Back to McNeil. McNeil then back into Timmy Abraham. Dangerous position again. And this time, Timmy Abraham strikes. And that's why we brought him on. It really is why we brought him on. Because I just didn't feel like Ricky J. Jones was going to do that. He was just... A little bit off the pace today in this match and in this episode so far. Timmy Abraham makes it 2-0. We could be just a little bit more comfortable now in this one. Timmy answering some of the critics there a little bit as well as they've given the football away. A lot of people saying that Timmy probably not good enough anymore. Has Brad Young just turned his man? Oh my God, he's improved so much. And he's got to play it back in, Naley, to Timmy Abraham. Unbelievable stuff from him there. Very, very surprised at that. 
Olorina couldn't find anyone. At Parat Pro now can't find anyone. And I'll just kind of fizzle out, but let's go, Brad Young. Well, Marvin just got cleaned out. And now he's going to play that one inside to Akparak Pro. Akparak Pro now. He's not silly. He plays it back to Timmy Abraham, who's going to have all the space in the world for a brace. Oh, he's got it off their player. I think that should still count as a Timmy Abraham goal. I will be frustrated if it doesn't. But there we go. They were really starting to pile on the pressure. They were just piling Bobby bodies forward. It gave us the space. Olorina got completely in the way there, by the way. Completely in the way. Timmy Abraham comes on and bags a brace. What an impact he's had. Very stoutly. Lado now has come on as a sub. Is there room for another? It feels like there is. Is there room for a Timmy Abraham hat trick? It feels like there is. Oh, what a save from Bentley. He'll be devastated. It could be his first hat trick for the club. And I thought he was going to go in and get it there. Aparapro won't get to that. Williams still putting his team in danger. Here we go. I'm going to I'm gonna try something crazy. I'm going edge of the box, hopefully, where Timmy Abraham's going to be. I'm going to chest it. And I'm going to volley it. And I'm going to be awful. <laughs> it's going to be awful. Timmy Abraham now, though. Not a bad position. Curls it. Oh! <laughs> Timmy Abraham has a hat trick. Just remember that this man is not done and dusted in this team. Timmy Abraham has a hat trick. And what a way to secure a hat trick with that goal right there. That is arguably the best goal I've scored. The ball roll gets him into the box. But what a finish that is from Timmy Abraham. Oh my God. That is is beautiful doubt him now guys doubt him now 4-0 salford city three of them for the substitute timmy abraham he's put himself in line to be starting in that strike position now as ricky j jones has gone cold oh my god i didn't know he had that in his locker i did not know that he could do that that we just saw i just thought he's on a hat trick why not try it and oh my god, he proved even me wrong. Well, a 20-minute hat trick for Timmy Abraham. It will probably go down in history of this save. Easily will go down in history of this save. And that keeps us in fifth place. I mean, we're still within a fight. But oh my god, I am still trying to recover from that. Right, so I've also made the decision now that Tom Tribal, although he's been great for us, really good free transfer, done his bit. I think this will be his final year at the club, though. I don't know what he will do after. I'm not going to try and sell him and get that 1.1 million. I think we'll just let him go on a free. That makes more sense. Because I'd still like to have him for the rest of this season. But I don't think we'll renew him for the future season. The West Brom game is up next. I am going to sim this one and play the Brighton one. Because I really want to play the Brighton one. Timmy Abraham's going to start up top. I'm going to give him the opportunity. I mean, you put in a performance like that, you're going to get the opportunities in my team. I tell you that. If you perform, I don't care what your rating is when I play FIFA. I really do not care what your rating is when I play FIFA. If you put in that kind of performance, you are starting in my team. Sibic's going to come back into the team. I'm going to stick with the Czech goalkeeper again. I'm going to try and give him a little run of games here. That does not mean that Tom King is not going to be our number one. He will be in goal for the Brighton game. But I want to give him the opportunities to grow because if we don't, we'll never know how good he could get. This should probably be a loss, if I'm being honest. How? how? Okay, so we lose to the rubbish teams. We beat West Brom 2-0. Brannigan and Lado with the goals. It seems surreal coming into this Brighton game that they're top of the league, which I expected them and Fulham and Southampton to be so good. But we are sat fourth, still kind of maintaining. The results haven't been as great in this episode. And it is extremely tight there. A bad run would, you know, ruin absolutely everything. But we're right there. I, I, this is crazy to me, but we are right there heading into January. Now, I mean, we've still got a full half a season to go. And this is progressively, I think we've got worse results-wise, but I'm still so happy. So here we are then, the start 11 for the Brighton game. And this is a game that I really think is going to be extremely difficult. You can see already just by looking at their squad how good their team is. There's a reason that they are top of the league. But this is our starting 11. Marvin on the right, Olorina on the left. Lado plays at camp today. Timmy Abraham starts alongside Brad Young up top. Brannigan and Aparat Pro in the center of the pack. And then what I consider probably my three best center backs in the back line. Doyle, Abdullahi, and Ogilvy. And then King in goal. Let's just see what we can do. When we played them last time, I don't feel like we were as good, as confident, and as settled as we are now. 
Let's just see what we can do. We're at home as well. Well, Brighton are already starting this one lively. Diata is going to be a nightmare for Mark. I need Mark to be on his ultimate performance levels here. I really do. What a tackle, Ogilvy. Vice captain doing bits there, saving me a little bit. The Callister now. They've just got so many good players. It's just hard. Klassen. And Mark is on his A game there. Tom King back in net today for us. Well, Aina then will bend that one around the corner to Ogilvy. And we can kind of break a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to get it central there to Brannigan. We're just not going to see much of the football. But that's absolutely fine. We've been in this position before, right? Where we don't have a lot of the ball. And what do we do? We just turn on them. We've counter-attacking football. That might have gone against us. What a save, Tom King. Oh, my giddy aunt. That was nervy. Not going to lie. Crepin Diata now back on the football. Don't like. I like him. Don't like him playing against me. Have some of that from Brannigan. Have some of that from Brannigan. Bradley Young now is just going to be able to kind of take this into the corner. I don't actually have any help. Ola Aina now is going to be able to break through. Timmy Abraham is going to lift that one in. He's just going to lift it in. Okay, the technical attributes of Timmy Abraham have, gonna, have been downgraded again. So far, they're, they're playing well. They just seem to be struggling a little bit to get the ball out wide, which is a... A major positive for us because that's where they're going to be, you know, super dangerous is when they've got that ball out wide. Brad Young now. Oh, referee. Going to be given here. Oh, my God. Trevor Chalibur is sent. I mean, it was really bad. He just comes right through the back. Yeah, I mean, it's late as well. Trevor Chalibur is going to be sent off. I don't like that. That makes this game more difficult for us. You guys already know. That red card most likely will make this game harder, if we're being honest. I am really going to just lift that one in towards Young is what I wanted. Didn't really have that effect. I feel like that's probably going to make this game more difficult. Perhaps pro now. Oh, he wants Marvin. Oh, he's going to get Marvin, isn't he? Marvin will collect this now. Against Cucurella. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, he just didn't have the finish. It so well, the ex-Real Madrid player. I mention it so much because we have an ex-Real Madrid player in our team. And I don't know if you guys know that, but we do. And he's bloody good. That would have been fantastic, though, if he could have just got the volley on it. What? Oh, okay. Brad Young was just itching his shoulder. I thought he was injured then for a second, and I was about to cry. It's fine. It's all right to cry when stuff upsets you. But luckily, he was just... He had an itch. Maybe just... Signal that to me next time, Brad Young. If you've got an itch, signal that it's an itch and not an injury. Maybe we could have a coded sign for that because I was very, very nervous there that he was, what are you doing, Oller Aina? He was injured. Aina, what are you doing there? The corner that they are going to go short with to Diata. And there you go. That's what Young can do defensively. Well, here come Brighton. Sanche out wide. It's going to be good from Ogilvy. He's been pretty decent so far this game. Did give away a penalty last time out, though. Doyle there up against Klass and Solly Marge. McAllister pulls it wide. I'd be lying if I didn't say here that if this ends nil-nil, I will be very happy. So if this just stays this scoreline, I actually will be really happy with that. We'll see what happens, but I never thought I'd be so over the moon with draws. But right now, considering even the 10 men, they're just so difficult to break down and then... Extremely difficult to stop when they're coming forward. So far, we haven't had the room to break away I would have wanted. Lado into Young. Young wants to ping that one over to Timmy Abraham. Abraham back in towards Young, but Cucurella's just got the pace. And I think that's something we're struggling here in the first half. Don't really have any pace up top with uh, with no Elliot List or Ricky J. Jones. Timmy and Brad Young have had moments, but to be honest with you, I think it's more down to the fact that Brighton are just extremely good defensively. And quick, they've got Lamperty and Cucurella back there, so it's very difficult to break that down. That's a great ball in behind to Diata, who's got the pace, and a good ball across. I think that was an unbelievable tackle from Doyle. Don't think this was a miss kick. I really don't. I think Doyle gets to this. As the ball comes across, I am nervous. And Doyle... Does just enough, I think. I don't even know if Doyle gets a touch. In fact, I don't think he does, but I think he does just enough. But Sanche off, which keeps us in this mat. Good play. Got to just stay a little bit focused here. We can't give them too many avenues in which to hurt. Oh, my God. 
Too many avenues in which they can hurt us, but Cucurella doesn't need any avenues because he's just going beyond absolutely everybody. Somebody kick him. Oh, my God! Cucurella! No, no, no way! Oh, my God! What have they fed him? Well, there we go. 1-0, and that probably will be the game. I, it just feels like it's a 1-0 game, but what did they feed Cucurella there? He went beyond two or three players several times, Gets into Sanchez, 1-0, and I just, I've got no words. You saw it, I don't need to explain it. That is exactly, I'm guessing, what you could do with an 86-rated player. It's those kind of things right there that Cucurella just did to my team. But Young, though, trying to just find a way over. I, I'm just struggling to find a breakthrough. Now, we do have weapons on the bench. That needs to be noted. Ola Aina, that ball into Lado's brilliant! Oh, my God, that should have been one. One, Salford. He will be devastated by that. That was the best chance we've had of this game. And there hasn't been many. And I'm not sure it's just going to widely open up now so that there is many. Here comes a triple sub. Some of it is just tired legs. Just purely is just tired legs. And then some of it, obviously, is we need to try and make an impact. I've opted that Young comes off because I felt that Timmy's been the more dangerous of the two. Uh, the Marvin sub is because Marvin's knackered, although Galloway does add an edge to this team. There's no doubt about that. And McNeil scored goals recently as Timmy loses the ball. McNeil has scored goals recently. Now, there's one thing I'll say about Brighton in this game. They've done really well at just closing the gaps when we put the balls up to Brad Young. And I think they'll probably do the same to Timmy. So I need to get out of my feet as quickly as possible. Pro, pro now. Galloway into Timmy. He gets it out of his feet quickly like I needed. And Ricky J. Jones can turn his man. Ricky J. Jones turned his man. Ricky J. Jones comes on and scores to make it 1-1 Salford City. And we are back on level pegging against top of the league Brighton. And we should be. They've got 10 men, but they've been extremely difficult to play against. But that's why you need impacts from the bench. For the first time, Timmy gets it out of his feet quickly enough. And Ricky J. Jones just does his defender. He's full of energy at this stage of the game where the centre-back won't be with them having 10 men. Amari was the centre-back. And it's a lovely finish, composed in front of goal. Just what we needed. There is five minutes for a team to score. Now, Blackburn went prime Barcelona after kickoff at this stage. Ah... Brighton going to do the same thing to me. Well, Aina just doesn't have the help. And at this stage, we would be smarter not conceding and taking a point than we would be, you know, pushing it and losing this one. If I can find a way through, I will do. Galloway finds Aparat Pro. That's great from him. Back across to Ricky J. Jones. McNeil! What a save from the keeper, Cucurella! <laughs> Oh, and that's a back pass, but it's back to the keeper, and that should be game, set, and match. And it is. That is the full-time whistle in a thrilling second half. Red card, two goals, frantic action. Ricky J. Jones comes on and makes an impact. Cucurella is the greatest footballer of all time. And what a game of football we had there. I'm glad I chose to play Brighton. It's always nice to match up with a team that I believe is already Premier League quality in that Brighton squad. And be able to do something. I don't know how that game would have gone if they had 11 men. I, I I don't know how that game would have gone if we had Elliot List. But we still managed to do something. Now, I do want to point this out. We are still in the playoffs. We're still fourth, but it is super tight. A couple of games swings, and we're not in the playoffs anymore. So that needs to be mentioned. But right now, we are in the playoffs. Do we have any aspiration of getting automatic? Uh, no, not really. I, I don't... I'm just, be surprised if we're in the playoffs come the end of the season but january is next episode i don't think we need to do much business again leave feedback feedback's always welcome when it comes to the transfers but just bear in mind where we're at, at the moment I, I really don't think we need to do too much business it will be whether we have to sell one of our stars although aina or akpa Akpro as well could be on the shopping list because we are going to stick to the idea that they join the club to treat us as a stepping stone. And if bigger teams come in for them, we will just let them go because that keeps the flow of this career mode going. But you guys are all absolute legends. I hope you're all doing well. At this stage, I should have started my new job. So I hope the videos don't end up being too sporadic, but I just need to find my bearings in the new job as well first. I work in catering. It's a hell of a lot of hours. It's a very intense job. 
So I just want to see how we find our bearings. But eventually we will get to a place where I'll be very confident that I can at least put out five to seven videos a week. I'm, I fully believe that. But thank you very much for your support. You're new. Sub. If you like the video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. It actually all helps me anyway. I will see you in the next video.